Most people think about motivation and reward and dopamine as just trying to achieve pleasure. And indeed, dopamine is released in the brain when we experience things that we like. Here's the way to conceptualize this. And if you can internalize this in your mind, it will really help you as you move through your day, trying to understand why you might be motivated or not motivated for certain things. So when you're just sitting around, not doing much of anything, maybe you wake up in bed in the morning, you're thinking about getting up or not, this reward pathway is releasing dopamine at a rate of about three or four times per second. It's kind of firing at a low level. When I say firing, I mean electrical activity in the neurons. So when you're just around, you feel okay, not depressed, not highly motivated, not excited, maybe three or four times a second. If suddenly you get excited about something, you anticipate something, not receive an award, but you get excited in an anticipatory way, then the rate of firing, the rate of activity in this reward pathway suddenly increases to like 30 or 40 times. And it has the effect of creating a sense of action or desire to move in the direction of the thing that you're craving. Dopamine is responsible for wanting and for craving. And that's distinctly different from the way that you hear it talked about normally, which is that it's involved in pleasure. Dopamine doesn't care about what you're craving, it just releases at a particular rate. Yeah, this gets into unintended consequences of modernity. And so we're living through this time where we, you know, going back to that flag that we planted of these unintended consequences of, oh, I can make myself smell good. Oh, I can, you know, watch the coolest video. Oh, like TikTok, dude, I don't have an addictive personality. That's the first thing where I'll lose an hour and be like, what the f did right. I just do? The problem is not pleasures. The problem is that pleasure experienced without prior requirement for pursuit is terrible for us. It's terrible for us as individuals. It's terrible for us as groups. And I have great confidence in the human species to work this out. But we are finding now, and we are going to increasingly find that those who will be successful, young or old, are going to be those people who can create their own internal buffers. They're gonna be able to control their relationship to pleasures because the proximity to pleasures and the availability is the problem. It's got to be that your celebration is slightly less dopaminergic. You don't wanna be on that high as you celebrate the win. You wanna be trickling out your dopamine regularly until you pursue things. And then just understand there will always be a crash of pain. And the more pain you experience, the more dopamine you can achieve if you get back on the avenue of pleasure through motivation and hard work. If you look at the increase in use of uh, drugs of abuse or prescription medication, huge dopamine increases are what those cause. That's a serious problem because it creates a cycle where you, you need more of that specific thing. I would say addiction is a progressive narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. If you look at any drug of abuse or any situation where somebody isn't motivated, it's people just over consuming dopamine from various sources. And then, and also the context within a, a TikTok feed is the context switch is insane. The brain has never seen, first of all, this is the first time in human evolution that we wrote with our thumbs, but that's a pretty benign shift. And then the other shift is normally you walk from one room to another or from a field into the trees or from a hut into, or a house or whatever it is. But now you can get 10,000 context switches in that 30 minutes of scrolling on Instagram or TikTok. And so it's all about self-regulation. We are going to select for the people that can self-regulate. So then people say, well, how do you self-regulate? How do kids self-regulate? Well, this is, this is a place where knowledge of knowledge actually can allow oneself to intervene. When you think, I'm feeling low, I don't feel good, nothing really feels like good, am I depressed? Maybe, but maybe you're just, you've saturated the dopamine circuits, you're now in the pain part of things. What do you do? Well, you have to stop, you need, you need to replenish dopamine. You need to stop engaging with this behavior and then your pleasure for it will come back. It's not just about being back and forth on the seesaw. You have to make sure the hinge doesn't get stuck in pain or in pleasure. So it's a, it's a dynamic process being a, a human being. It's not easy. You know, whatever you lean into and you think about often in th these pursuits will start to reshape these circuits because these dopaminergic circuits are tied to everything. It's all the same general set of mechanisms.